Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Doc. My name's Shane and I'm a final year medical student, actually a recently qualified doctor and neuroscience supervisor at the University of Cambridge. And today we're going to be talking about how best to deal with university and school closures during the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of us across the country and even across the world have been affected by the closures of schools and universities amidst the worsening COVID-19 pandemic. However, it's very important for us to realise this is not a holiday and we shouldn't treat it as such. We should still think about how we can progress our education and remain productive throughout this period. So today I'm going to be running through three steps that we can take in order to remain productive during these uncertain times. The first is making a timetable, the second creating deadlines for ourselves and thirdly it's very important to test ourselves. The last bit of the video I'm going to be talking about what ways we can limit procrastination or actually make procrastination more useful and the final point I'd like to make is actually on social distancing and and how important that can be in terms of alleviating stress on our healthcare system. Right, so let's get to it. Firstly, it's very important to create a timetable for ourselves. Why? Because it'll provide us with a structure throughout our day. Normally we're used to lectures that we have to go to, set timetables, supervisions, etc., that we need to go to and follow. However, because of the worsening COVID-19 pandemic and the closure of our universities or schools and teaching sessions, it's more important than ever before for us to create timetables for ourselves and allocate time to do certain topics and certain subjects. My best advice in terms of going about this this is firstly sit down and decide what things that you want to or need to cover for the rest of the year. Now you can move on and create the actual timetable. Different people like to work for different amounts of time at any one time. That can be about 40 minutes or an hour or two hours. Personally, I like to work for an hour and a half at any one time. So I create my slots based on that. For example, I might do something eight to 9.30, have a bit of a break for half an hour and then start from 10 to 11.30. Once you've created a list of topics and subjects that you want to cover, allocate it to these different time slots and build in time for breaks so you remain productive throughout the day. Secondly, it's very important to create deadlines for yourself. Universities, schools automatically do that for us and they tell us, okay, you need to have this set of questions done at this point in time. However, because of the school closures and university closures, we don't really have that big brother telling us you need to do this at this time. So it's very important for us to create deadlines for ourselves and say, okay, I want to learn this material by Thursday. By creating this deadline, it essentially forces you to work up until that point and make sure that you've completed that by that set deadline. I know that we previously had the luxury of universities telling us to do that, but it's now important for us to create those deadlines and for us to stick to it and make it. Thirdly, it's very important to test ourselves. Research has shown testing ourselves before studying a topic or a subject and then testing ourselves afterwards far greatly improves our retention of that topic. So my advice is to force yourself to practice some questions and pass papers and do some tests and incorporate that into your deadline. You might decide, okay, I want to learn all the respiratory conditions and all the acute management of that by Thursday. And you might say, I'm going to test this by carrying out all the pass paper questions that are available on my university or school website. We've always had to deal with procrastination throughout our studying career. So my advice in terms of uh, minimizing procrastination or actually making procrastination useful is to maybe follow some Instagram pages or social media pages that provide educational content. This can contribute to passive learning and you can just pick up a lot more things without you even realizing. You might get bored of just sitting in front of a textbook and you might just scroll through Instagram feed going scroll, scroll, scroll. And then you might come across a random page and educational content that has posted something and you might read it, you might not retain it, but it contributes to a bit of passive learning and it will really make procrastination a little bit more productive. Another way that you can minimize procrastination is actually to set allocated time to procrastinate. So this is a concept of creating an efficient timetable that allows sufficient breaks throughout the day so that you can study with a pretty good level of intensity when you're actually allocated to study and then you can procrastinate and actually enjoy scrolling through something or just chilling, relaxing, whatever. So that brings me on to the final thing that I want to talk about, which is social distancing. This is very important amidst this worsening COVID-19 or coronavirus pandemic. 
So social distancing is the concept of minimizing the amount of interaction that we have with our friends and family in larger gatherings. This includes things like going on nights out, pubs, restaurants, having massive big birthday parties. So why is social distancing important and why am I talking about it? The problem is going to come when there are so many people infected all at once requiring high intensity support and care and we just don't have the resources, the beds, the machines that are going to be needed to look after these patients. So what can we do in order to minimize the number of people infected at any one time? Well, that's where social distancing comes into play. With social distancing, we help to minimize the spread of COVID-19 or coronavirus throughout society, especially to the most vulnerable people, including our elderly grandparents, parents, and other elderly and more vulnerable members of society. So to summarize then, the three steps that you can take to remain productive during these uncertain times is one, create a timetable, two, set deadlines for yourself, and thirdly and finally, test yourself before and after learning a topic or a subject. So hopefully you guys found this video really useful, and if you have, please like, follow, share, and subscribe. Make sure as many people find out about how we can remain productive throughout this uncertain time, as well as how we can minimize the pressure that's put onto our healthcare system by exercising a little bit of caution and just practicing a bit of social distancing. But that's it from me for today, and I'll see you guys next time.